what was the catalyst for you specializing? Uh, in terms of like stopping everything and going to volleyball? Yeah. Uh, it's actually kind of funny. So I was very big, same thing, lots of sports. I was doing travel volleyball, high school volleyball, travel baseball, high school baseball. And then I picked up hockey in the winter. I've always been a big hockey fan, but I had never, I've been a strong skater, but I never actually played hockey. Uh, so I did it my freshman year. Um, and then at that point when I'm doing that much, I like was leaving one practice to show up 10 minutes late to the next practice and then go to another practice. And we were like, all right, you still got school and stuff. Like we need to, you can keep doing three sports, but we can't keep doing travel ball with all three sports. So, um, I stopped hockey after my freshman year. Um, and then I was just stuck with baseball and volleyball that I was doing travel in high school. Um, and then my sophomore my freshman year, I, yeah, so my freshman and sophomore year, I played baseball. And then going into my junior year, I had the tryout, and I had uh, – I can't remember if I had stopped travel ball at this point. I think I was, like, kind of like, all right, we're going to set down travel ball and just focus on volleyball. But I still wanted to play high school. Um, and my dad's cousin – you still there? Yep. Sorry, I don't know what just happened on my laptop. Some Adobe thing popped up. Um, so my dad's cousin, who – they were close and I didn't even know he was my cousin until I was already at the high school. He taught there and he was the coach of baseball. He just got the head coaching job uh, when I was trying out this junior year and he actually cut me. Uh, my dad's cousin cut me from the team and I was like, Fury. yeah, yeah. And I was like, I wasn't mad. Like we've always been very much so like uh, the family, like th th that means nothing. Like just cause he's my cousin, no shot. Is he putting me on the team? Like he's just mm -hmm. taking who's better. But I knew, like, I was like, I'm just as good as these other pitchers. Like, I should be on the team. And he was like, you know, it's you and one guy in a grade below you. You guys were even. He's like, I have a roster spot for you. But I cut you because I don't think you want to keep, like, wasting your time with this. And I was like, well, what do you mean? He was like, in all honesty, highest you're going to go in baseball is maybe D2, probably a D3. Um, he was like, in volleyball, you have a lot more, like, hope and a lot more following. And you're, like, he was just like, it's kind of what your bread and butter has become. He was like, I'm just giving you the option to like really focus in on that. And then I was like, all right. And like, I was never, I was never going to be like, okay, no, I still want to be rostered. Like I was on the cut list. It was posted as me on the cut list. If I show up first day of practice, that doesn't look good. And I kind of just my own like mentality. I, I don't want that. Like I want it to be a very clear cut. Like you are in the spot. Um, so after that, I was like, all right, well, thanks, Uncle Harris. Like, I'm, I'm done. I'll, I'm just doing volleyball. So then after that, everything stopped. I stopped doing baseball, hockey, basketball, all of it. Like, I think I did like a rec league in my senior year for basketball, but like just full focus on volleyball from there on. How do you cope and react to that reaction from your Uncle Harris, where he says to you, hey, there's something else that you would probably be better at, so go and do this thing. I can definitely see a lot of people that would react quite negatively to that and think that that's maybe an overstep. Yeah, no, I mean, it definitely, it definitely can be perceived that way. And if somebody took it that way, like, I wouldn't necessarily be, to be upset at them. I understand, like, you're a 15-year-old kid who's like, dude, I just want to play the sport. Like, why are you doing – why are you putting me in this situation? So I totally understand that reaction. Um, I was raised in a, like, military household, everybody on my father's side – aunts, uncles, every single one was in the military. My dad was in the Marine Corps. So it was, I was always, it was always a very like, not harsh broad bringing up, but like there was no like sugar coating. There was no prizes for second place. Like I it was, it was all from the time I was like seven, I was always given it very straight and very honest where it's like, Hey, like, Hey, you suck at hitting. You're going to bunt every time because you can't hit for shit until you can figure out how to hit. You're not playing. Like, I mean, he was my dad's eight, or my brother's eighth grade basketball coach and my brother rode the pine. He never played because he just wasn't good. Mm -hmm. So we were always kind of raised that way where it's like, you know, if you're earn the spot or if you do this, you get it. So, and I knew where I was in baseball. I knew he was right. You know, D3 was probably going to be my highest, which no hate to D3. I'm sure I would have had a great time if I had done it. Um, but I, I really took it, like, not even with a grain of salt. If anything, I was just, like, really, like, motivated to work in volleyball now. Because I was, like, at that point, I was, like, now I'm, like, one of the few guys who is only focusing in on one sport that was a multi-sport athlete. So now I was, like, in my head, I was, like, boom, I'm a college athlete now. Like, time to start training like one. And that's all it was. So I did really – it takes a lot for people or for something to happen or somebody to do something to me to like make me really angry at them or like feel bad for myself just because the way I was raised was so aggressively competitive.